They had to do a, uh, they did a uh, endoscopy too, because I've been having, I told my, oh, I had acid reflux. So oh, let me check that out too. I'm like, dude, I don't want you to do that too. It just seems weird that you're going in both holes, you know? <laughs> well, while we're in there. <laughs> you might as well while you're there. Hey, don't use the same tube though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wash it don't off. Don't use the least. same scope. <laughs> wash it off. That's all I'm saying. Mm, it's a little rinse yeah. or something. I mean, it's your butt. <laughs> yeah, this is true. What up? This is Robert Ory. Or three pointers. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. So Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable! Oh, this guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? <laughs> Robert Ory from downtown. What are you giggling about? <laughs> right out of the gate, he's giggling. What are you laughing That's at? It. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, I don't, I don't believe that. Uh, we've done this uh, 159 <laughs> times. It's the Big Shot Bob podcast. B Dog, Brandon Harper. I'm Rob Jenner's. That is a very giggly seven-time NBA champion, Robert Ory. What, what, what caught you? Oh, I'm just laughing at myself, man. Thinking oh. about the conversation before the show. <laughs> <laughs> the show before the show that no one gets to hear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, okay. So you had. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how much of this you really care to talk about, but you had uh, you had adult procedures happening, which is why we're a day yeah. late. Man, uh, we, come on, we had a, we had medical <laughs> procedures happening on Tuesday. How do you? Uh, I'm 53. Bro, go ahead and look. It ain't like you had you had like you make yourself Rob makes sound like you had a BBL or something. Well, well yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had adult procedures. He had going adult. On. Hey, look, hey. that's that is something that happens. A procedure you have to undergo uh, when you get a little. Later on Older. in life, man. Yeah, it's just you know, I'm I haven't had to from, go through it yet. And I'm not looking yeah, forward to it. You haven't. You, how old are you now, Rob? Uh, I just turned 46. So no, they moved it to 45. I know. It's it's it's. <laughs> I know. I know. It's going to happen soon. I'm, yeah, you I better know. do it sooner than later. Okay. Matter of fact, you know, you need to schedule that right now. Ladies right. and gentlemen, if you're in the Go dark down the about, hall and tell his wife, B, that he needs to schedule his right colonoscopy now? right now. Oh, For all no. y'all that may be in the dark and don't know what we're talking about, because they're being real vague about <laughs> well, this, we were Rob a got a colonoscopy. Yeah, yeah, he had a colonoscopy. Which is fairly yeah. routine. Uh, routine. Yeah, and you got to do it. But uh, you're yeah. good? You're back? I'm back. Good. I'm and, back, baby. And you're feeling okay. <laughs> I feel great. Okay. You know, the thing about it is, is that day you can't eat and then you just go on into the porcelain guy. So you have to rehydrate the next day. So you yeah. got to drink a lot of water. Like big time. Don't, don't they give you like a, something you have to drink and it kind of like cleans you out basically? It's, like it, it's, it's advanced now. They give you pills now. Oh, now it's pills. You can do either okay. or. Okay. You can do the pills or you can do the, you know, or the drink. The first time I did it, I drank the, I drank the Kool-Aid, so to say. Well, you <laughs> and did. this time... Yeah, I know yeah, it's you can been, take the pills. It's it's all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, but, yeah I highly no, recommend I, I, drinking. Don't do take, don't take the pills. Yeah, because a lot of people say drinking is the nasty part, but the pills are the hard part because you got to take one pill every five minutes for an hour. So you had twelve oh. pills you have to take, and so, and then you had to get up and do it five hours before your procedure, and that's just like oh my goodness, I really just drink everything at night. And yeah, just, just go in one shot. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm glad you're healthy. That's that's yeah, I'm healthy. That's yeah. all that matters. That's that's all that matters. Hey, with the, with the shit that's going on in this world and day and age and how many people are turning up with this and that, whatever, you Who know, knows? yeah, I'm getting checked out every time I yeah. I get a chance. I well, it up. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know, you you just lost your pop. I lost my dad. Yeah. So it's like it's, yeah. you know, health is top of mind, I think, for everybody. So exactly. Glad right. you're taking care of yourself. Uh, and there's... that's one thing about us, though, as a, is as. What's that? Especially in our culture, we like, oh, we got a problem. We're scared to go to the doctor. Go to the doctor, man. I'd rather spend whatever it is and take that chance of knowing and get it get it handled early than knowing late and you can't get whatever it is handled. So yeah, I guess go to the doctor. Go get checked out. See, that's something I've always I, I was bad with until I got sick. And then mm-hmm. once you get once you have an issue, like I had the heart attack, that was it. Now you now yeah. you always go to the doctor. But up until that point, I was the same way. I never went. Yeah. I would never go. Yeah, yeah. I laugh at the people who say, well, I don't want to know. Hell, I want to know. No, I'd, I'd rather know. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather, rather know. know and be around than not know and yeah, check out a few minutes early. So, yeah. Good. A uh, lot to talk about this week. Holy cow. Um, yes. Even since I did the show sheet uh, late yesterday, we had all the stuff happen last night with the Lakers, and there's all this stuff online this morning about how they've kind of 
I don't want to say turned their back on Darvin Ham, but there's all this video online of him like last night where they're all in the huddle and he's trying to draw up a play and literally like LeBron walks out the huddle and nobody's even paying attention that to ain't him. That's the first time he's done that. I know, it's happened yeah. a few times, but but it's I don't know. It just seems like I've seen it all over the place this morning. I've just been like, man, is are you I getting that the, vibe that they're kind of not 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 on the same page as he is? Well, you know, I, I don't get that vibe, but uh, there's a lot of moments when you watch a game where you see there's not the effort from the guys, and I'm not going to call any players out, but it's a couple of times where the ball is like bouncing, like right in from, and they just walk into the ball, and then the other player dips in and take it, or you're supposed to box out, the guy pushes you out of the way and take it. It's about effort. You know, it's like it's almost like these guys think, oh, shit, we good enough. We can turn it on. Like, dude, no, you're not. You might, you might man, it's 10th now. If they won last night, they could have bounced to like six or seven because the way the Suns are going the opposite way. Yeah. You never know what can happen. So it's just – and to go back to the walking out of the huddle. It, that happens in every league because it might be a play that the guys already know that we run, and sometimes coaches draw it up just to be drawing it up. And be like, oh, yeah, we got it, we got it. So it's a veteran okay. team. They do that sometimes. Okay. Yeah, it, just, it was just because they you know they dropped that game. And I think, what, they've like they're in a half a game now of the – 10 spot with Golden State, like they're like right there. Yeah. So, yeah, there's just a lot of buzz this morning about yeah. kind of the downward move there. Yeah, it's going um, down. It's, it's, it's the Titanic right now, it looks like. It's mm-hmm. like they're going the wrong way fast. Mm-hmm. Let's hope they turn that <laughs> uh, There's, By the way, uh, do you, where do you want to start here? I mean, God, we've got uh, the Kyle Perry stuff we talked about uh, it was like a week ago or a week and a yeah, half ago, so- I don't even remember. But mm-hmm. now that's like, that's done. Um, Arkansas of all places. I, that was really like money. Yeah, I guess. But even for Arkansas, that's a little sideways for me. You know, for me, it's like he would say, "You know what? I'm going to USC." You know, it seems like that would have been a better choice because I don't think, think USC wants some. <laughs> but you think about it, though. You think about money and prestigious programs. I know it's a football program, but it's California. They got money, unless they spend it all on the football program. But it's. Yeah. Yeah, Arkansas, you know, that's the old days with, what, 48, 48 minutes of hell or 40 minutes of hell with, you know, the Todd Day and Lee May, the Mayday crew. Yeah. No. So I don't know if Arkansas can get it back, though. That's well, not a destination. Well, I think anywhere that Calipari goes is going to be a destination for guys. No one thought Memphis was going to be a destination until Calipari got there. And so – I think, look, Arkansas got money. You got a lot of very wealthy alums that come from Arkansas. Very (laughs) wealthy. And you have a coach, like, I understand it's a football school, but you got a guy like Kyle Powery there that's going to be able to recruit. Like, he's going to be able to recruit. Now, being able to. That's got to be it. Yeah, it's the recruiting. Now, getting, you know, once you're at the tournament, how these guys look, you know, he turned, obviously, Kentucky was always a one and done factory. Big time. Arkansas may look the same way, but Arkansas wants that relevance. You know, they want to be able to be competitive. And if you want something like that, then you go get John Calipari. Now, how far that he how far he can get them and how much he can do now, but now they have some buzz. Now they have, now they have people talking about them and they're yeah, not. Yeah, when's just, the last time we talked about Arkansas basketball? That's just it. Like <laughs> you know, Mayday, yeah. <laughs> Mayday. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. it's a little different now. So he's going to be able to recruit because the guys are going to go where he is. I think what Carlos Williamson and that crew was the last time they really been a good program. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this for them too. The only thing I could make sense of this, which if you think about it, this is a beyond John Calipari move for Arkansas. They want the recruiting, like like B-Dog said, they want the prestige, they want the recognition, yeah. they want to get a little national spotlight, they want to get some players in there. They might, and Even if they don't get all the way, the next coach can carry that forward and make that, you know, carry that program down, take maybe a little bit of that recruiting and that prestige right. and that namesake down the road a little bit and maybe get them relevant again. But yeah, it, It's I, at a point now where it, I don't even think a lot of these kids care. They go into whoever's paying me the most, you know, and I'm glad the NCAA is t- thinking about putting some limit on the times you well, can transfer. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I'm like, I'm so happy about that, man. It's just if ridiculous. If you can't control NIT, then you have to get a hold of the portal, at least frame the portal in ways that helps schools and not just strips them of all their talent so yeah. so quickly. Uh, college football and basketball both going through that. But, yeah, the Calipari thing, man, that threw me. Um he had, by the way, in, uh, in, in April of 2019, he signed a 10-year extension 
with a lifetime of uh, paid ambassadorship upon retirement for Kentucky. So he's giving all that up. Yeah. And he's obviously taking a payday Damn. somewhere down the road but I also think, from Arkansas. I think, if I had to guess, I think the Malums, obviously, you know, they were really getting at him. Well, you know, when you, when you talk about how you recruit and – the lack of lack of success that you've had in the recent years, and you've only had one title, and that was the Anthony Davis year. That was 2012, and since then it hasn't really been much. And in a couple of these years, it's been one game out in the tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, second round out. Like to be this talented and to not even really compete when you get into the tournament, let alone not win the SEC. It, it's. It, it, I don't think it sat well with a lot of the boosters, with a lot of the yeah. alum after all this time, and I think they really kind of got tired of each other. Yeah, I think it gets to a point where you know you you get all the great athletes to come through there, but you got to win. Yeah, and I, I, you look at that program. You, you look at the last. It was like All Star Game, where it was like eight guys, was it that all went to Kentucky that was on the All Star team, something ridiculous like that. Yeah, but only one of them uh, maybe had a championship. And but it's the thing about do you want guys to be one and done at your school, or do you want a bunch of vets like a Purdue, like a UConn, and win the NCAA tournament? And I look at you look at the Final Four. Every team had like veteran guys. It was really no superstar freshman on there where that was killing it because they don't know how to win yet. You know they know how to play, but they don't know how to win. And, and that's, to me, what you got to have, guys who know how to win. You can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't know how to play as a team and win, you go, you're going to be one and done. Yeah, you're going to make a lot of money, but your college program ain't going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, congratulations to UConn getting it done two years in a yep. row um, yep. under uh, Dan Hurley. And the women's game stomped the men's game, by the way. Women's game got like 18.9 million viewers, and the men got like 14 something. Yeah, they've, so, been, they've been killing the men's game all season. All long. season, yeah. and they got them in the they got them in the finale again. Um, it, I, I really liked Hurley's approach though to that game because I think the the approach was like take out every guy that isn't Zach Eady and just that's it. It doesn't matter if he scores 30 points. If every <laughs> other guy on the floor, we can hold that collective group under 20 points. They don't have a shot in hell. Yeah. And yeah. sure enough, man, and it was cool. I didn't realize that um, the UConn assistant coach was Bill Murray's kid. I know it, right? I didn't even know that. I'm like, yeah. what the hell's mm-hmm. Bill Murray doing at the game? And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's, he's the UConn yeah, assistant He's been a lot coach. of games. Yeah, he's been a lot of he, – he supported his son like all season young. He, he's didn't been even there. realize. Yeah. You know, the thing about, you know, UConn had the ability to do that because they had the big guy that could play against Edie. You know, Edie – got his buckets, they were hard buckets. Not yeah. like against, you know, NC State where you got, I'm 7'4 and I got a 6'6 six, six guy on me. I'm going to score easily. And so it, it made a big difference when you got two big bodies that could, like, give you, what, 10 fouls right there and yeah. kind of beat up them. But they trapped during the second half was giving Edie problems, you know, big and time. exposed a lot of stuff about Edie. Like, Edie is not a really good passer. He is one of those mechanical bigs where I'm going to go one, two, spin over my left shoulder, jump hook, and he, he got exposed. He's like, he's a player of the year, but he probably won't even get drafted in the top 20 unless somebody needs a big. It's like, yeah. oh, I want someone to guard um, uh, uh, the Joker when it comes down to the finals or something, give a big body. But it was it was good games, though. Really good games. No, both yeah. games were good. And congratulations to your friend, Don Staley. Uh, yes. Coach Staley yeah, gets it done. South Carolina completes the uh, the perfect season, unbeaten all the way through. Um, we gotta we gotta get her on. Yes, uh, we gotta reach out to her now that the season's done and things are mm-hmm. you know. And I, I imagine the next week or two is gonna be a little chaotic for her. But uh, I did oh, want to play. Be a lot of yeah. I did want to play a couple pieces of audio from Dawn Staley. Um, I thought this was a class move after the game. She she kind of threw some love to Caitlin Clark. I just thought this was class. I, I really would just like to say that um, I, I have to congratulate Iowa on an incredible season. Awesome, awesome. And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Her, she, carried a, she carried a heavy load. 
for our sport. And it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to she's gonna lift that league up as well. So, so, Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. And we appreciate you. I, the reason I thought that was class is I think a lot of times in like when you have a a team that beats a, a, a another team with a with a player like that a standout player who's obviously getting all the national attention they might throw him a little and by the way congratulations to uh, you know Caitlin Clark for like she went out of her way to talk for about a solid minute about uh, yes. everything that Caitlin has kind of brought to the women's game this year and everything she's done so I just thought that was like super class move by Don I think. You got to be able to recognize, and obviously, she, you know, she couldn't, you know, complete the circle by winning the title. But when you, when we talk about these leagues, you know, we talk about the NBA when it comes to star power. We talk about even, you know, with the WNBA when it comes to names and star power, and even college. You look at a lot of the times where the men were. It wasn't just the men's game that was quote unquote better. There were notable names that we all recognized and we all look forward to. Hey, I look forward to looking at looking forward to looking at this team because of this guy and this guy. Like when Duke has Zion and right. RJ and Cam, like people look they hated them, but they look forward to watching them. Why? Because it was star power. And when you have a woman like Kaylin Clark, who, you know, the last two years has really set the women's game on fire. And everybody wants to see the, the way that she's playing, where she's pulling up from, the, the records that she's breaking. Everybody's gunning for her. Yeah. You know, even when it, with her and Angel Reese, everybody thought they hated each other when it was just – it's just two, two dominant players battling. It's competition. Game, yeah. yeah, it's game. But that's what added to the allure of the women's game. And everybody's talking about, you know, this, that. But this is what people want. They want competition. They want to see notable faces. They want to see people who, hey, I'm looking forward to this game because I remember what happened last year. That's that's yes. what it's been this season. Yeah. You know, the, 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 to go off of that point, look what you did last year. Let's go to Raven Johnson. Yep. You remember last year what Caitlin was doing her like this, waving her mm-hmm. off? Mm-hmm. That hurt her in her heart. Yeah. She went in the lab and she got better, but she took it out on Caitlin's ass, so she deed her up. Yeah, in that second half of that game, she's like, you know what? You gonna wave me off like that? I'm gonna use that that anger I have towards you, and d her up. It's like, you know what? I'm gonna make your ass go right. If because mm-hmm. you go left, you jam me up. But she, Raven, d her ass up and play play. You know, I I, I appreciate that. You know, for every athlete that understands their weakness and they go in the lab and they try to you know build on that weakness and make that weakness you know throw it out the window, so to say. So I, I, I was proud of them the way they – think about it. South Carolina lost five starters. Yep. And yep. went perfect. Yep. And went perfect. So, Unbeaten. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, you know, speaking about working on your weaknesses, you know, obviously there's a quick turnaround between the end of the, the uh, women's college game and the beginning of the WNBA season. It's like a it's couple quick. of months or maybe yeah. like a month and a half because the draft is – Coming Next up, week, isn't it? right? Yeah, <laughs> and the season starts in May, I believe. I think that's right. Yeah. So, what what did I see? Angel Reese working with Wimby's trainer on her jump shot, or just putting in work in general, and understanding that there are aspects. Even though she she took the women's game by storm with her with her attitude and with her passion and everything like that, understanding that that only that right there can only get you so far, especially going to the next level. I got to be able to, to knock down some shots because really the way that she plays, she really plays like a big man, but she's really a undersized woman yes. when it comes to how she plays. Yes. And she's going to have to learn how to knock down a 15-foot jump shot in order to kind of keep people off her and, and to kind of diversify her game. And I think that's something that she's really working on because uh, she's a top 10 pick. She's a top 10 pick, and that's something that she's really going to have to work on in order to take her game to the next level when she gets to WNBA. Yeah, because those girls, I'm sorry, those women at the next level, they got speed, they got talent, and they got, more importantly, smarts. They got a lot of court smartness, so a lot of things that you can do in college – they're gonna take away in WNBA. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm I'm anxious to see how much of the passion of this women's game carries over into this WNBA season. I really want to see 
some of that carry through and spill yeah. over maybe like a little ratings bump or some media attention that the WNBA necessarily hasn't had in the last several years. So I'm excited for that. I think this is a cool trend and I hope it continues yeah. because I've, I've had a lot of fun, probably more so watching the women's games this year than yeah. the men's not, not, and it's not shot at the men's games. It's just been yeah. more fun to watch. You know, one of the things that people are talking about is you think about all the women we're talking about, we saw them as freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. And, and so we had a chance to follow them. Yep. You know, next year is going to be Juju's turn to carry the torch. And if you go to men's, there's no one to carry the torch because they all bouncing so fast to the NBA. You know, we had Edie this year. And, you know, and Edie is not, he, he's not the social person that everybody wants to follow because his game is boring. You know, his mm-hmm. big men games are boring. He's a true big man. So you, you think about it. We love threes. We love dunks. And that's what we love. And that's why we love Caitlin Clark because of the threes. And now we like Juju. Her Juju game is just everything. But if you go to the men's side, who's carrying the torch? You know, as soon as you want to, oh, you carry the torch. I'm out. Yeah, it's a one and, and so nine, it's, man. Yeah, it's, it's so hard. And now you 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 can't like, you can't attach that love to someone in, in, in college, men's college, because they go so fast. And I think it's tough for the men's game too, but it's also understandable because when you're a lottery pick and you're a top flight talent – it's better for me to take the talent that I do have knowing that as, to an extent it's enough to play in the league and work on whatever I need to work on while playing in the league and still being, you know, 20 years old, maybe 19 years old, then to, hey, I'm going to come back another year. Now, you do have the NIL, which helps because everybody wants to make money, so I'm going to make money if I'm a top talent because brands are going to be looking for me. But so many of these guys want to be able to – to get into college, get whatever they can, and then get to the league because that's been their dream. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been their dream to play against the best of the best. And in their mind, it's kind of like, okay, even with the NIL and I can make some money, that's the NBA. And at 19, 20 years old, I think I got the game to compete with them right now, and there are certain things that I can still work on while I'm in the league, and my game can still develop while I'm there. So I don't want to stay here two, three, four years Mm -mm, because my game is good enough Right now, some of them, not all of them. We'll get to Brian so James think. in a minute, but <laughs> some of them, <laughs> yeah. some of them think their game is ready until they are like, "Oh, y'all, I, I can never understand this." As if I was a GM, all of a sudden I have this guy coming out of college. Mm-hmm. He's averaging twelve points a game, and he thinks I'm gonna leave as a freshman. Twelve points ain't shit. I'm like, come on, man. Like, no, don't take that chance. And that's just like make them get better. In college, make them understand that this is a game that needs to be played as a team. You come on to the NBA, but you probably gonna be like, let's see, like what twenty of those guys that go early mm-hmm. in the G League trying to get better, two way contracts. Well, yeah, yeah I, just... I, I'm talking about your your when it comes to college, some of your, your yeah. cream of the crop type guys. I'm talking oh, about I, I, your, I, I... Your, your your Tatum's, your Paolo's, sure. your, your Zion. Th- those your, guys yeah. are different. Yeah, That's, those are different. Yeah. I'm talking about the guys like you know who let's. Take the last couple of the years, you know, the guy that was with Alabama, he, I Miller. can't think of his name. No, 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 no. Oh, the other guy say. he left early a couple of years ago with the crazy hair went to Boston. Ain't oh, touched yeah. the court in forever. Yeah. Then you got um what's the guy from UCLA that came out of Sierra Kenya out here? Um Oh, I know you're talking about uh, uh yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. All these guys that like think about it. you stay one more year, you go from, from a late first or second round pick to a top five pick. You go from making what I don't know what the league the, the average is for rookies, but you tripling that if you stay one more year. Yeah, dude plays for Cleveland, I believe. Yeah, yeah. A, a Bailey. 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 Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, then so. I think with the, with the men's game, there's this allure not just to the league, but like there's money to be made in the NBA. And yeah. NIL money is fine, but NIL money is going to go to those guys. It's going to go to yeah. the the top tier players. They're going to and everybody else is going to scrap for a little bit of money. Where it's like if you can go on to the NBA, well, you got a paycheck yeah. maybe. Maybe you yeah. can catch a you know a, a league minimum and and get on a roster somewhere and you got a shot. But yeah. you know there's there's I think a little bit more with the women's game. I just think it's different. Now the WNBA will, just doesn't have the cash flow the NBA. Now I will say yeah. this for NIL because it is name, image, and likeness, and there are guys out there who've been very creative when it comes to what makes them unique and what makes them different, and they're not top flight athletes to be able to get these brand deals. So if it's not your talent that really stands out and speaks for you. 
find creative of the ways in order to get your name out there in order for brands to attach themselves to you because it's not just about your play on the floor it's about what makes you unique and what makes you stand out from everybody else yeah they take like mccain for instance for duke you know he has a uh, he has a, a fingernail polish yeah, <laughs> contract that. now i'm like really okay. so it's like dudes like that you need to find some kind of unique way to add more money to your nil sort of say so yeah. you know yeah, big ups to guys like that. And in that and you think about other guys. I know the guy from Kentucky, he just declared for the NBA draft. Mm-hmm. I can't think of his name. Um the oh, young yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about the guard. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, do you realize that I, I hope he makes it, but he reminds me of a guy that's gonna leave early, go from, you know, instead of staying one more year in college, go, I'm just throwing this number out there. I don't know. So you can make two million this year mm-hmm. if you leave college, or you can make Eight million if you wait one more year, you know it's like a, it's a six million difference. So You're right. Oh, Isaiah Collier from USC just declared as well. Yeah. Well, we knew that was going to yeah, happen. Well, yeah. He didn't want to go to college at first. He wanted to go straight <laughs> to the league. <laughs> uh, before we get to Bronny, I want to play one last piece of audio from Dawn Staley. Um, mm-hmm. Very passionate woman. Uh, very. very spiritual woman. Mm-hmm. Wanted to show her praise. Talked about God a lot while she had her moment. Uh, of course, the internet did what the internet did and took her her moment and put a church band behind it, which I thought was awesome. I gotta give honor to the Most High God for allowing us to be back at the same place in which we had sad tears. And I just want you to know (laughs) that the God I serve, the God I serve, when he closes a door, he opens up a door, that is, that's giving you unimaginable success. This is uncommon favor. <laughs> that is hey, what you like done. to call a Baptist organ. A Baptist church organ. <laughs> that dirty sound right Baptist there. Church it is. Organ. Whoa, whoa. Oh, I just, I love the... <laughs> Get that in God there. is good. God is good. That's when, good you know, hey. just that, that was just, I thought that was good. Good job by the internet. That was Mommy cool. at old days. All right. Well, we, we teased Bronny. Talk about Bronny. Uh, I think this yeah. kind of, uh, I don't, I really genuinely didn't expect him to declare. I really didn't. I, I thought that, you know, we talked about it a lot that he was probably going to try. You wanted to see him get some more time. Uh, on the floor at USC, get a little bit more under his belt, but immediately, you know, uh, didn't have a, a crazy standout year or anything like that. And uh, that was it. He yeah. averaged four, two, and two. Yeah, I mean, it was just he didn't start. Yeah, yeah. He didn't, he didn't get much declared. minutes. Yeah, but I think with him though, he he declared with no agent, and he's also in the portal. He is in so the portal. He, so if he, if so he I goes think somewhere else, he can continue to play college. Yeah. 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 But, you know, think about that. It's like, he's, it's like, that's one of the rules that I don't, I, I like for the NBA, they, got, they should change. He, because now you could pick, I think they still own your draft rights or whatever, mm-hmm. or something crazy like that. But either go or stay. You know, don't put me on the fence as a team because if I'm, are you going to go or are you going to stay? Well, so, but, I think he, I think, I, I'm on the fence. He needs to stay. Yeah, I think he should just stay and just you know, just build his brand. You know, you know it ain't like he he needs money. <laughs> Where does he go? I was gonna say he's he can't go back to USC now. Right? Where no he he's already he's, leaving USC. He's, no, he's, he's out of USC. Yeah. Where does he mm-hmm. go, Rob? Ohio State. Okay. I go okay. to Ohio State. That makes it depends sense. if he still has family in that in the area. Yeah. Or he can do like a you know go across the street to you uh, to UCLA or go to Pepperdine or go somewhere close uh, long San Diego State you know Pepperdine. they got a good team. Going to fucking Pepperdine, what are you talking about? Jesus, I'm just throwing names out there that's close to USC. Yeah, you know? I guess. But... I think for me, he he's a hard nosed player, and the way that San Diego State plays, I think would fit his type of game. Mm-hmm. So he's just rolling down to San Diego State. I... He's still close to home. See, USC though is is a brand you know what i mean yeah. like i think it, i think ohio state makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. it's a high profile brand it's connected to his family that would make sense if you're going to go anywhere ohio state or ucla i think either of those schools probably make the most sense. i think his yeah. options and whatever we was looking at i don't know i can't remember if ohio state was one i know duke was one and i don't see him 
I don't know. The thing about Duke, Duke got a, no, you did Duke got the number one recruit. Cooper Flag. Yeah, yeah, Cooper Flag coming through. He got like five guys coming in. Yeah. Uh, and, he ain't and, gonna see the floor. The, yeah, no, no. Yeah, shot. depending on those guys, those guys aren't leaving, I don't think. I think they're gonna you know, run it back. So nobody's declaring as of yet. They've they had a couple of guys people. transfer or enter the yeah. transfer portal, but other than that, yeah. it's mm. Ohio State for me makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, but I mean, hey, it, it, do, do you do you legitimately see him hitting the draft though, or do you think it's I, just going to be a transfer move? I, I think it's just going to be a transfer move. Um, I, I think the draft is intriguing for a lot of a lot of teams because of what uh, LeBron has said that he wants to play with his son, and so um, that's going to be very interesting because you know I think LeBron is. Is he can opt out at the end yeah, of the season? Yeah, I think season. that's the other part of this was that uh, yeah. everybody's yeah. saying he's basically they think he's just going to opt out either way, just mm-hmm. for the no trade clause. Yeah. Um. So he could sign a new contract. Uh. He has a fifty one point four million dollar player option for the coming season. Declining that wouldn't necessarily mean he leaves the Lakers, but he gets the no trade clause. So right. he could. That's that's sort of a contract move more so than a opting out because I want out of L A. type of. Thing. This is, I mean, bro, go back to school. <laughs> go back to school. Go go somewhere where you, you can start, work on your game. I know a lot of scouts talk about his elite defense, and that's cool. But go somewhere where you can work on your game and you can be better. Because it's not like you need the money. You're, you're probably the only player in the country that really don't need the money. Um <laughs> And I get look, you you have the the weight of the James name on your back, but stop! Don't let your dad, don't let that name, or don't let any anything rush you because you gotta you gotta stand on your own too. You know you gotta create your own your own legacy and forget you know even if a lot of this is coming from LeBron. Look, don't let that man, don't let your pops rush you into something that you know you ain't ready for just for it to be a market employee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hit you with the organ now every time you get on the platform. Don't do that, cause look, that's a big name to live up to. We know how sons do when it when it comes to following up their fathers. They're never as good as their fathers. Well, you're Steph never Steph for Steph. Yeah, but that's well, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay let me put it to you like this: when the fathers were great. The sons don't tend to be better. Well, when the fathers are all time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, LeBron James is the highest bar (laughs) that you can set. Yeah. I mean, he's the all-time leading point scorer in NBA history. He's in the conversation for the greatest of all time to ever pick up a basketball. So that's a stupid high bar. I heard somebody say something about Michael Jordan's son, and it had me laughing for about 10 minutes. They said Michael Jordan's son was the most athletic Uber driver ever. And I <laughs> cried when I heard it. They were like when it came because he never wanted to yeah. It, yeah. it was it was it was hilarious because when you start comparing your sons because one of his sons, both his sons played ball, right? Correct. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because one of them yeah. played at Syracuse and wasn't that great. They're not Michael Jordan though. No, but I mean, I don't even think they weren't good. Right. It's, but it's like, no matter how good you are, <laughs> like, even if you work your ass off to be a great player and you're yeah. not that good and you work, 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 I, you're never going to be Michael Jordan. I, I wonder, like, if you talk about the, when you talk about elite players, like, if you go down the list mm-hmm. and their sons who play, who were, like, let's say, where would the comparison be to, like, who's, like, you know, you got Steph, who of course was you no know, Dale could shoot. Sure, Dale was a good He's player, way but he than, wasn't yeah. anything what Steph became. I think if you t- it'd be part of Michael and Clay because you talk about how high being his lead and then how high as, a, as the son is. Okay. I think Michael and Clay would be the the, the best father son duo if you go down the list. Because if you're I can't sticking name to any. the NBA, yeah, I can't yeah. think of anybody else NBA. The yeah. only one that sticks out for me is probably Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. Oh, in yeah. Major League Baseball, because Ken Griffey mm-hmm. Senior was a an outstanding player, yeah. and then when Junior came along, I mean, he just I mean, he changed everything. <laughs> yeah, he changed everything. He changed everything. So because you think, let's see who else. Like think about uh, Wiggins. Uh, yeah, his dad was a hell of a defender, but his son is kind of a little bit better. It's it's a, it's, it's a lot of father son combos. That, that would be interesting there to see is. the best father son duo. 
in the in in, in the history of the, the NBA. History of the NBA. All right, well, we'll look that up for me for uh, for another show. When we have some <laughs> more time to prepare. Uh, by the way, since we're on LeBron, uh, we had this this pop up from Paul Pierce. He thinks that uh, the Lakers should trade <laughs> LeBron and Spider. <laughs> no. Flip him. Uh, send LeBron back to Cleveland. The Lakers get Donovan Mitchell, and then Bronny can go to the Cavs, and they can do their little swan song in Cleveland. I think Paul Pierce would need to shut up. I think Paul Pierce is smoking <laughs> a little bit too much of what got him fired on ESPN. Uh, yeah, I just think. Because <laughs> what? At what? in what world do, do the Lakers trade LeBron James? I, and in I, what I world does he go back to Cleveland? Right. And, and what world does does LeBron even accept that trade? Right. You know, and that's the other you've part. You've established so much in LA as far as you're, you're off the court, you're at the basketball life. So yeah, no, I, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just a little, little kooky there. But there is a lot of talk about the Cavs trying to move on from Spider. Yeah, I heard about that. That, yeah. that I've yeah. seen a lot of uh, Bleacher Report saying that they're trying to get something out of him. Uh, his contract runs through twenty four twenty five. But they're they're saying that the Cavs want to try and move him before he becomes an unrestricted free agent, so they get something in return. I know a team that should look at him. Who? That's what I was going to ask. Because Hawks. I think no, Jesus no, no. no. Well, the Hawks. <laughs> the story with the Hawks today is are they going to keep Murray or Trey? Because <laughs> one of them is going to go. This offseason, they may be trying to unload a guard. Yeah, I like, <laughs> don't need to add more. No, um, and and I and I think you need to do this because this team is going to have to start spending money early because of the emergence of their star, and that's the Spurs. Um, That's not bad. I think because of the emergence of Wimby so early, they're gonna have to take a book from what the what the Texans did this year with C.J. Stroud off on his rookie years of, and, and the way he around. emerged. Yeah, what did they do this off season? They spent money big time. Yeah, because you know why? I got to do this early because I got to take advantage of my court, my rookie quarterback on his rookie deal. Because when it's time to pay him, I ain't gonna have that kind of money to spend and just go all willy nilly with, you know. And I think that's the same way with the Spurs, because when it's time for uh, Wimby to get paid, oh please, he gonna own half of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's not, because Luca gonna own half of Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, no, yeah, I'm, no, 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 no. Half, I'm talking yeah. about when it's uh, Luca's already gotten paid. No, he's about to get paid even again, uh, though. Right, again. but hit, but what what Luca's about to get this next go round, Wimby's gonna get more when it's time for him to get paid. Yeah. But here's the thing. You, I don't know if we can pull up old shows. You remember when I told that when they made this trade for Spider, that it was going to hurt them. What is going to help them? Mm-hmm. I can go. I look. said it was going to hurt. It was going to hurt Garland, and it hurt. And it, it, he got in Garland's way. He went from being an all star yeah. to like being this person. Like, what? Well, fuck. You know, I thought this was my team. Right. Yeah. He just didn't fit. Right. You know, Spider to me, he doesn't fit anywhere unless he is the boss of a team. He can't have another superstar because he he's like an Allen Iverson to me. He has to he has to be the focal point, you know, because he's not. Think about it, how many times have you ever had a triple double? How many times? Have, what's his highest in assist? He's not a very good passer. He's a hell of a scorer, decent defender, right? But it's hard to put him somewhere where he's going to make the team. Like and uplift the players around him. He's he's just not that type of dude, you know. Yeah, I'm looking at the player, I'm looking but, up his stats right now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, not not much on the assists. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's uh, a thirty-eight scorer. points and seven, thirty-eight and two, thirty-one mm-hmm. and six, thirty-two and eight. Uh, yeah. yeah, not much. He's yeah. averaging six assists on the. Well, that's not bad. Not That's terrible. not bad. Six assists is not bad at not all. Terrible for an average yeah. for a two bad. guard. Yeah, absolutely. That's not bad. Well, but and the thing about it is, like, I remember so many times when he was in in Utah, and he would go and he, I think it's a trust factor when it comes to him. Like, you have bigs around the rim. He should put it up to. He takes a shot when he shouldn't. Yeah. And I know it was with Gobert, and he really didn't. I don't think he ever trusted Gobert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you got to get a bigs, what we call a little sugar, so they can go down the other end and block shots and help you out defensively. So, so you don't think just, he's working in San Antonio? No, because he's gonna get in Wimby's way. Uh, Wimby, yeah, Wimby does, they're diff- very different players, man. But, but think about it: that guard that, that San Antonio has now gets in Wimby's way. He want to shoot the ball too many damn times. Yeah. When you got a guy like Wimby, there should never be a time on the floor where it's somebody unless you hot yeah. that you have more shots than Wimby. Mm-hmm. Never. 
And when you get a guy who comes out and says, "Oh, I had twelve, uh, twenty shots, and Wimby only had twelve, there's a problem. Yeah, you better been you better been eighteen for twenty for you to take twenty shots, and I only get twelve. But this is a Donovan Mitchell problem then, because he's going to have to learn that that this has to work that way. Like you can't stick him on an island somewhere and expect him to win. It's Boy, not going to work. This, hey, it's some guys get it and some guys don't. You know, so it's going to be tough I, for him to learn that now because yeah. everywhere he's been, he's been he's been, been, he's been yeah. the guy. And so even when they traded him to Cleveland, you know, like you said, even in, with Darius Garland feeling a certain type of way, him getting in Garland's way because when you trade for Donovan Mitchell, you don't trade for him to be the second fiddle. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, but, it's tough. But if he goes to San Antonio, who's the first fiddle? That's true. Maybe. That's true. I get it. <laughs> well, what yeah, what but, hell? Like, I mean, but if you do the same, like it's some, where has being the man gotten you? If that's the case, ship him to D.C. then. Why? He should go is to that the just a team that disarray. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll ship him to DC. <laughs> hey, hey, but if and I'm a wallow GM, in mediocrity forever. Go nuts. And the crazy part now with the new new CBA, it's going to be hard to trade him. Yeah, because you got to match money for money. It's not throwing in five guys. It got to be a superstar player for a superstar player. Mm. So who are you going? Who's going to take on that contract? Unless you got someone like a Tobias Harris that has a large contract that's not utilized, you ship him there or something. It's, it's going to be hard. But I'm thinking about other young teams, but the other young teams that I'm thinking about also have a younger, developing, quote-unquote, star that yeah. you say get in the way of. Like, even if he went to hey, Toronto, or Scotty Toronto? Barnes. Yeah. Oh, hell, he well, get in all the way of Jalen Green. Yeah, Jalen Green, him yeah. ain't going to – yeah, they ain't going to – yeah, well, Scotty Barnes is the face of the league, so why would you send him to Toronto? <laughs> you, you know, now that I sit here and think about it, you think, to me, the best place for him would be Miami. Miami who? <laughs> Miami who? Because – play for think the about it. <laughs> You think about it. The culture they have there. They've been trying to get him way, there for a minute. I, that's what I'm saying. You get him there, now – you can play him at a two or a three or one, two, and you got that they will make him mm-hmm. fall in the line. Oh, he G- culture? Jimmy beat his ass up. He, he, yeah, he exactly. Him yeah, and Bam. Exactly. Yeah, Jimmy, be, exactly. Jimmy Bam beat his ass up. This, mm-hmm. this and is so what you got to have that. Yeah. yeah. So that's the only place I see. That actually might like, make sense now that you say that. Get him in line where yeah. he can play. Like, this is team ball down here. It ain't no it, you. It's a we. If yeah. you're not going to give him the whole team, then you got to have yeah. somebody like a Jimmy Butler who's going to mm-hmm. have the balls to stand in front of him and go, no, 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 no. This is how this works. And, yeah. you know. I don't think and he's then had you a lot of that the, in his career. And you got the GM sitting up there looking down. They're like, oh, let me know. Don't make me come down there. <laughs> <laughs> Do not make Pat Riley get Pat off his Riley, ass. Don't make me come he down there. He will come get you. He will come for you. Yeah, I think all parties benefit in that. I think he then mm-hmm. gets to a team that, well, Cleveland Cleveland was supposed to compete. Well, I mean, Cleveland the... was real good at the start of the season because we were talking about that where we were sleeping on Cleveland. And then, man, they just fell off. Yeah. Well, injuries hey, hit them. Hey, and the Rockets were real good at the beginning of the yeah, season, and then too. They just, yeah, the Rockets were on the Warriors' heels for a hot minute. And then, no. That, hey, yeah. reality sets in. The yeah. Rockets had, Rocket had some real favorable schedules, boy. Like, even that 10-game streak they had, mm-hmm. all the teams were garbage. <laughs> and then they had one team that had the best player, just like at the beginning of the season. They had – everything fell in line for them. And then when the reality sets in, when you play teams that are fully loaded, oh, oh you're yeah. not that good. Well, okay. We're, we're still <laughs> got a, lot, a long way to go. Uh, yeah. All right, I do want to get to our game. We're going to play a game of historical high-low coming off of Uh-oh. the uh, undefeated. No, this is a fun game. Uh, coming <laughs> off of the uh, the unbeaten season by the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks, and we will get to that in a second. But first, got to give out big shot of the week. Uh, it's going to go to a gentleman named Laverne Bicer of Fort Worth, Texas, who is 105 years old and just wow. lived to see his 13th total solar eclipse. Wow. Uh, I give him a big shot of the week because <laughs> dude lost his wife in 2023 mm. at 97 and him and his wife kind of did all these eclipse things together so he got to go do one more at 105 wow um to kind of pay homage to his wife and go through all the eclipse stuff and when they asked him uh the secret to long life he just said good clean christian living and everybody else was <laughs> like uh okay yeah good clean christian living um, absolutely 105 years old um, that's my that's my new that's my new favorite sound bite Oh, the little the organ hit? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, 
Did you see the eclipse? Did you were you uh, at all enamored with it? Is I, it something you're into, or just who gives a crap? I totally forgot about it, and apparently go. I was taking a shower when it was happening. <laughs> I missed it. Good for you. So I no. was in the shower with the eclipse. <laughs> all, all I did here was get like a little overcast. Yeah, so I didn't have to eye. look. I, I had. I didn't have these. I didn't have the glasses this time the around. Protective eyewear. Yeah, so but I could tell it was happening because. You see the tent. It was tented outside, and it was shaded. I'm like, mm. okay, so it's happening now because ain't no way there are no clouds in the sky, and the sun is there. So there's nothing that should be blocking it other than. Yeah. So I could tell, and I so I enjoyed it from that standpoint. So I went out and I just sat outside and enjoyed how cool it was because of the shade. Mm. Rob's doctor got the full eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> he got the full eclipse. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to see that big, uh, big brown moon. <laughs> it was all blacked out. That was, 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 was not. It was. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see the game this week. So uh, we, it's just another game of high low. Uh, I'm gonna go back and forth. You guys get to pick a number here. And then your uh, opponent here will get to say if they think the answer is actually higher or lower. Um, and a lot of these just have to do with uh, historical landmarks as far as sports goes, because we just had uh, UConn go back to back. First time that's happened in a minute. We just had South Carolina complete the unbeaten season. Uh, so some of the historical uh, marks here, we'll see how you guys do. We'll start with Rob. You get to pick the number and then Harp's going to pick higher or lower. So, we all know Caitlin Clark broke the all-time Division One scoring record. She passed up Pistol Pete Maravich. How many more points did Caitlin finish with than Pistol Pete? So Rob's going to set the line. I say 350, 350. 350 more points than Pistol Pete. Hart, is the real answer higher or lower? I'm trying to remember when she passed him. That was a, what, a month ago? Yeah, it had to be a month ago. I'm going to say, ooh, higher. Higher than 350. Uh, Pistol Pete's record was 3667. She finished with 3951, 284 points. Dang. So it was lower, lower. <laughs> the point to Robert Ory. Very nicely done. All right, Harper. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe DiMaggio holds baseball's all-time record for consecutive games with a hit at 56. That's a record that's probably never going to be broken. In the modern era, Pete Rose came the closest with how many games in a row with a hit? All-time record for consecutive hits. So the all-time record is DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. No Mm -hmm. one will ever touch it, I don't think. Uh, Pete Rose came close in 1978. How many games in a row did Pete Rose score a hit. I'm going to say 35. 35. Rob? Higher. Higher or lower? I think it was like 42 or 44, wasn't it? Robert Ori. 44. 44. 44 I remember that for some row. reason. Yeah. yeah in I 1978. That uh-huh. In 1978, he got 44 in a row. Now, there's some guy from like the 1800s that hit safely in 45 or something like that. But Ed, yeah. so that's why I said the modern. There's no record. No, yeah, it's, like, it's like when they, when they play with shoes on. I mean, it was like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, uh, Robert Ory, uh, you brag all the time about Uh-oh. the 93 94 Rockets starting the season 15 and 0 because it was a record. And that record stood until 2015 when the Warriors broke it. With how many consecutive wins to start the year? 21. All right, Harper, that is not the right answer. Is the right answer higher or lower than 21 games? Oh, I'm trying to remember. I think... I think it's lower. 24. 24. 24 games, the Rockets, in 2015. I couldn't, I couldn't remember. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was the year they broke the... That was 20... Yeah, that, was the, that was the 73 15, 9 16 season. season. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the year mm-hmm. they broke that record, too, yeah. the Bulls record. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. 24 in a row for the Warriors. But uh, that, that record, the Rockets record stood for a hot minute, uh, about 11 years or so. On the opposite side of that bracket, Harper, the Cleveland Cavaliers hold all three of the top spots for the longest losing streaks in NBA history, capped off with the LeBronless 2010-2011 Cavs, who lost how many games in a row that year? Mm-hmm. Detroit flirted with this this year. 
Didn't quite I get know. there. I know. They flirted with it, though. Was it? Was it 20? I, I want to say 20. He's going to say 20. That is not the right answer. Robert Orr. I know it ain't. Is, the, is it higher or lower? Rob says higher. Higher. Yeah, higher. Uh, they lost 26 in a mm. row that year. <laughs> 20, and by the way, in 1981 and 82, and again in 82 and 83, they lost 24 in a row. Yeah, both of those yeah. years in the 80s. So, man, the Cavs just, just <laughs> notching all three top spots there. All right, uh, Robert Ory. Uh, let's talk about the Iron Man. Cal Ripken Jr. famously broke Lou Gehrig's record for consecutive MLB starts when he eclipsed 2,130 starts. He fin- started his 2,131st game in September of 95. He ended that streak in September of 1998 with how many total games? Consecutive games started. So he broke the record was 2,130. How many did he finish with? See, this is out of my wheelhouse. Some would say... Two, two, three, three. Two thousand two hundred thirty-three. That's not the right answer. Harper is the right answer. Higher or lower? I think it's higher. Uh, it's way higher. Yeah. Two thousand six hundred. Because you got to take into account, yeah, it's one hundred eighty-two games. He played for damn three more years yeah. before he hung yeah. it up. So yeah, he got a he got a couple hundred more games in under yeah. his belt. So yeah, twenty-six thirty-two. 2,632 consecutive, consecutive games, games started wow. by Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah. That's nuts. Call the name, call him the Iron Man. That's the no Iron reason. Man. That's the Iron Man. Uh, all right, Harper, Lakers legend A.C. Green holds the NBA record for most consecutive games played. What is that record? <laughs> I feel as though this <laughs> is By the a way, lot. he missed in, in, during this streak. This went from 1986 to 2001. From eighty six to two thousand one, he missed. He would not. He missed so, three games from nineteen eighty six to two thousand and one. AC Green and, and, missed three games. And here's the funny part: he had to play one game where they was like, "You you can't play," because he had a he had a broken finger, and he said, "Fuck that, wrap it up," and he played anyway. <laughs> so he holds the record, and he shot at what that might be. Jeez. For that long? Uh, I'm going to say... I don't know. 600 games? All right. That is not the right answer, of Rob. Of course it's not. Is it's the right answer lower. higher or lower? Lower. Uh, he played 1,192 consecutive <laughs> games, so it was higher. Yeah, so was Harp higher. gets the point there, but yeah. holy yeah. cow, dude. He would not miss a game, man. He 1986 to, to 2001, that dude missed three games. That's ridiculous. That's insanity. And that the way he insane. plays, all hard oh, and wild and crazy. Yeah. Aggressively, yeah, three mm-hmm. games in, in the span of 15 years. It's just nuts. I uh, think, you know, and then, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bridges. He was, like, Mikhail trying Bridges. to break that ra- record. Oh. And, they try to sit him out of game. He played like one minute just so he can keep the just record so he can going. Keep the record going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right, Rob. Wilt Chamberlain is at the top of a lot of NBA record lists, <laughs> including how many consecutive games where he scored at least twenty points? How many consecutive games in a row? 53. Wilt Chamberlain notched at least twenty points. You say fifty-three? Yeah. All right. That is not the right answer, Harper. Is the right answer higher or lower? I think I'm gonna say higher. Will Chamberlain scored 20 plus points in 126 consecutive. Yeah, he was NBA ridiculous. Games. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's, that's dumb. Yeah, he that's was, a season and a half yeah. consecutively. He was. Everybody was five five <laughs> <laughs> and white. <laughs> right. uh, last one, uh, Harper. We'll go one more NFL. Uh, Johnny Unitas holds the NFL record for the most consecutive games with a touchdown pass. At 46, 46 consecutive games. Uh, Brett Favre is second on that list. With how many? How many consecutive games did Brett Favre throw a touchdown? 40. It says 40. That's not right, Rob. Is the right answer higher or lower? Higher. Uh, no, it's lower, actually. Uh, 36. Oh. 36 consecutive games. Brett Favre threw a touchdown. He gave me a window of six. So I, I, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> <never tried. laughs> still missed it. Son of a bitch. <laughs>